Lesh Nyhan syndrome. You start noticing the signs early. A strange compulsion to bite your lips, gnaw your fingers, bang your head against hard surfaces when you get frustrated. Not tantrums, reflexes. It's like your brain is issuing commands without consulting you. You want to stop, but you can't. It feels like there's a gremlin inside your motor cortex, pushing buttons just to see what happens. And all of it traces back to a single missing enzyme. One tiny chemical your body failed to make. Without it, your brain chemistry spirals. You build up uric acid like a soda bottle shaken too hard. Your joints hurt. Your emotions are volatile. But the worst part? People assume you're dangerous or unstable. They don't see the fight you're having with your own wiring every single day. Stone man syndrome. You trip over a sidewalk curb and bang your hip. It's sore the next day, then swollen. Then it starts to harden. At first you think it's scar tissue, but over time the joint stops moving altogether. Weeks later, your shoulder stiffens too. You go in for surgery to fix it, only to find out it's made everything worse. That's when the diagnosis drops. Fibrodysplasia, ossificans progressiva, FOP. Your body has decided to heal every bruise by laying down bone, fusing muscles and joints like they're part of some post-apocalyptic armor set. Every injury becomes a construction site, every surgery a red flag that triggers more bone growth. Eventually, you can't lift your arms. Later, your jaw freezes shut. You're becoming less person, more monument, an accidental statue sculpted by your immune system's paranoia. Hypertrichosis. You're born with more hair than most men have at 30. It's not just your head, your cheeks, arms, back, even eyelids grow thick, dark strands. As a toddler, you look like you wandered out of folklore. At school, the jokes start early. Werewolf. Beast Boy. Circus Act. You laugh them off, but it stings. Your body never got the shutdown code that tells most hair follicles to chill after birth. Instead, they're in overdrive, growing, spreading, thriving like tiny forests. You try waxing, shaving, laser removal, but it always grows back. Doctors take photos. Some researchers call it an atavism, a trait from distant ancestors resurfacing, a glimpse into humanity's hairier past. You're a genetic throwback in a modern world, caught between science and myth. LRP5 mutation. Unbreakable bones. You don't realize you're different until your first real fall. Maybe it's off a tree. Maybe it's during a football game. Everyone panics, but you stand up, brush yourself off, and keep going. The x-ray comes back with no fractures, not even a hairline crack. That's when doctors notice your bones are unusually dense. Two, three times denser than normal. It's not just luck. It's the LRP5 gene mutated in your favor. Your skeleton is like reinforced concrete. Most people break under pressure. You bounce. But strength has its quirks. When you swim, you don't float. You sink. MRIs struggle to read you. Dentists complain your teeth wear out drills. You're a walking paradox. Invulnerable, but weirdly incompatible with the rest of human hardware. DEC2 mutation. No sleep. Needed. You go to bed at midnight and wake up at 4 a.m. Completely refreshed. No grogginess. No caffeine dependence. No foggy mornings. While everyone else needs a gallon of coffee and a motivational podcast to get moving, you've already journaled, worked out, and replied to every email in your inbox. You don't try to be productive. You just don't need the downtime. Your body has a mutation in the DEC2 gene that changes your sleep architecture. Less time in bed, more time in REM. Your rest cycles are more efficient, like an internal Tesla battery that charges in half the time. People call you superhuman. You call it Tuesday. The world moves slow around you. You're not restless. You're just genetically optimized to stay awake while everyone else hits pause. Tetrachromacy. You're the only one in the room arguing about whether the sky is more periwinkle or cornflower. People think you're being pretentious until they realize you're literally seeing colors they can't. Your eyes aren't defective. They're enhanced. Most humans have three kinds of cone cells for color perception. You have four. That extra cone unlocks a whole new dimension of visual nuance. Gradients invisible to others pop like neon to you. Beige is never just beige. It's wheat, sand, bone, champagne, and 15 shades in between. You see differences that make no sense to anyone else. Choosing paint becomes existential. Fashion coordination? A living nightmare. You live in a world full of colors unnamed, beauty unnoticed, wavelengths unacknowledged, and sometimes you wish you could switch it off. But most of the time, it feels like having a private window into reality's hidden spectrum. Methemoglobinemia. Your skin has a bluish tint, like you've just emerged from a cold lake or a fantasy novel. You're not sick. You're not hypothermic. You're just blue. It's not makeup. It's chemistry. Your blood isn't carrying oxygen quite like it should. Thanks to a rare genetic hiccup, your hemoglobin's iron isn't binding oxygen normally, so the oxygen just sits in your bloodstream, awkwardly uninvited to the party. The result? Your skin takes on a purplish blue hue, your lips go navy, and ER doctors panic. You're healthy, just unusually pigmented. In some families, it's been passed down for generations, like the famous Fugate family of Kentucky. Locals called them the blue people. You just call it home. Myostatin-related hypertrophy. You're born with a six-pack, not a baby fat roll with optimism, actual muscle definition. As you grow, the gym becomes less of a challenge and more of a joke. You build strength like others build allergies, rapidly and without trying. 
Your secret? A mutation that blocks myostatin, the protein that tells muscles when to stop growing. With no break in place, your muscle tissue expands freely. You're stronger than you look, and you already look like an action figure. No supplements, no lifting regimes. You were born pre-buff. Coaches want to train you. Scientists want to study you. You're living proof that the human body has its own hidden power mode, and you weren't upgraded. You were born this way. Try methylaminuria, fish odor syndrome. You scrub, soak, rinse, repeat, but the smell never fully goes away. People wrinkle their noses. You pretend not to notice. You've changed soaps, cut out fish from your diet, avoided eggs, beans, anything sulfur-rich. Nothing works. Your body just can't break down a compound called trimethylamine, the molecule responsible for the distinct stench of decaying seafood. So it builds up, leaks out through your sweat, your breath, your urine. Doctors say it's harmless. Your social life disagrees. You don't lack hygiene. You lack an enzyme. That's it. And it's enough to make every human interaction feel like a test you didn't know you were taking. You become a master of distance, of managing perception, of quiet exits. Not because you want to, but because your genes forced you to. EEC syndrome, clawed hands, and missing teeth. Your hands are shaped differently. Two fingers, maybe three. They curl in ways people don't expect. You were born this way, limbs that don't follow the standard design. Your baby teeth come in late, your adult teeth, maybe never. Sunlight burns your eyes, your skin cracks easily. EEC syndrome doesn't pick just one system to mess with. It disrupts many, skin, nails, limbs, hair, teeth, tear ducts. It's a mutation that treats the human blueprint like a jazz solo, improvising wildly. You adapt, you learn how to hold tools differently, how to read faces, how to push back when people assume your body reflects your ability. The world wasn't built for you, but you build your own way through it. Citizen versus flipped organs. The doctor places the stethoscope on your left side. Silence. Confused, they check the machine. Everything's normal, just backward. Your heart beats on the right, your liver sits on the left, your stomach, your spleen, your entire internal layout has been mirrored like a flipped photo. It's not painful. It's not dangerous. It's just confusing. This is situs inversus, a rare condition where your organs develop on the opposite side from normal. For most people, it's discovered by accident, on an x-ray, during surgery, or when someone panics thinking your heart is missing. You're perfectly healthy, just spatially unconventional. You live in a body built like a mirrored map, proof that biology doesn't always care about compass directions. Congenital insensitivity to pain. You don't remember the first time you should have cried. Maybe it was when you touched a hot radiator or when you tripped and cracked your collarbone. Your parents panicked, but you just stood there, curious, not alarmed, because you weren't in pain. You've never been in pain. At first, it seems like a superpower. You're the kid who doesn't cry at vaccines, the teenager who laughs off sprained ankles, the adult who doesn't need anesthesia for a root canal. But soon, the cracks in that fantasy show, literally. Your body gets hurt, but without pain to guide you, you don't stop. You don't limp, you don't flinch, you don't learn. You pick scabs until they bleed, bite your tongue until it splits. This isn't numbness. Your nerves still carry touch, heat, texture. You feel pressure, you feel temperature, you just don't feel the alarm. And worst of all, there's no fix, no pill, no therapy. You don't get better, you get careful. You become your own detective. You train yourself to be suspicious of comfort. You build an internal system of checks and balances because the one you were born without can't be downloaded later. You learn that invincibility doesn't mean safety. It just means you never hear the fire alarm when the house starts burning.